A picture is worth a thousand words. Got it? Taking care of us can be so easy. Take good care of the children. Hello everyone, welcome to the second panel discussion on the Roving Caregivers Program. The Roving Caregivers Program is an informal early childhood education program that seeks to reach children from birth to three years of age who do not have access to any formal early childhood education. Early stimulation for children and parenting education for parents form the core of this RCP program. What has happened to date is that the RCP program has proven its capacity to improve the care of young children, increase their attention capacity, develop basic skills, improve their health and nutrition, and also produce a much better rate of performance both at the preschool and for future education results. The RCP is currently being facilitated by the Caribbean Child Support Initiative, which is a division of the Caribbean Center for Development Administration, CARICAD. The RCP originated in rural Jamaica and has so far been replicated in Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Belize. The Bernard van Leer Foundation of the Netherlands has been the primary financer of the RCP. Currently, however, there is a need to focus on sustainability of this program and therefore issues related to impact and funding, inclusion of the public, private sector and civil society are also strong considerations. Joining me in the first segment of this program on the RCP and in our second panel discussion, I'm very pleased to welcome Susan Branca Lashley, who is the program director of the Child, Caribbean Child Support Initiative, and also Dr. Didicus Jules, who is the registrar for the CEO Caribbean Examinations Council. Mrs. Branca Lashley and Dr. Jules, it's a pleasure to have you both and welcome again. Thank you. Um, Susan, I think perhaps we would all benefit mm -hmm. from an idea for those of us who are not clear on what is this RCP program in terms of how it's implemented mm -hmm. and what are some of the core activities that have driven its success to date. Okay, thank you and it's great to be back yes, discussing the Roving Caregivers Program. I want to start by saying that we live in a region where the needs of those who have a number of economic and social challenges are not treated with with any great uh, determination. Um, children born and raised in poverty very often are placed on an unfavorable trajectory given that they do not have access to social support services that allow for their early stimulation and development. This often leads to low educational attainment, frustration um, that comes with that low educational attainment. Mm -hmm. And of course, um, very often we see a lot of social fallout um, as manifested in, in youth and uh, youth delinquency yes. from a very early age. Mm -hmm. the, the Roving Caregivers Program is a multi-dimensional program that is really uh, attempting to stymie some of these social fallouts that we often witness um, in our adolescents and young persons. It's intended to provide stimulation for those we consider at risk because of the social and economic uncertainties they're born into mm -hmm. and is really attempting to provide them with an opportunity to be stimulated and certainly to provide for better educational attainment and certainly to allow them to fit Yes. better within a productive uh, workforce. Yes. The program is implemented in the home, so it reaches parents and children in their natural environment <coughs> and really offers an opportunity for parents to learn in their own context how they can effectively stimulate their children. As simple as basic conversation, um, manipulatives, use of their the, the fine and gross motor skills really 
helping them to develop how they can hold a pencil within a, a school context, and essentially helping them to be better prepared and ready mm -hmm. for school. Yes. And this is an important, and certainly research has demonstrated the importance of those critical years, birth to three years old, in terms of brain development. Um, research has shown that that is the period where most of the critical brain development takes place. Mm -hmm. And it is unfortunate that we have not been adequately treated with this critical age ban in terms of the important development that takes place there. Yes. Dr. Jules, you have seen this program at work in St. Lucia. And um, further, I know you have been preparing a position paper on the roving caregivers program. What for you stands out? Well, first of all, let me say that I think it's important to situate this program in a context. And the context is, is, first of all, the deficit in early childhood provision across the entire Caribbean. Yes. We have historically treated primary education as the foundation of education. In fact, it is an erroneous view because it is early childhood stimulation and development that is the true foundation for education. Um, in a sense, Education is that full continuum. And while we, while we as a region have done very well in terms of the provision of primary education, you, there's universal primary, we've moved to universal secondary, mm -hmm. we are still very far off from universal early childhood provision. The second contextual consideration is that over the last decade, the Caribbean Development Bank has played a really critical role in encouraging the preparation of poverty assessments across the region. And to some extent, that has, these have been used in planning developmental activities. But I think from an educational perspective, we need to make more use of those studies to look at the deficits and to look at it, to be able to zoom in a more, in a more clinical and forensic way at the, the groupings that are at risk and the nature of the risk that they face so that the interventions can be more targeted. Okay, yes. Susan, as we wrap up this segment, can you just give me some really key uh, data in terms of your research findings about the impact of the Roving Caregivers Program? The first year's uh, impact has shown that the Roving Caregivers Program has made an impact on children's cognitive development, that is their ability to learn. It's also demonstrated a positive impact on their expressive language skills, their ability to articulate mm -hmm. and express themselves, and on their fine and gross motor skills which I mentioned earlier. Yes. Um, interesting enough, the, the, the study has also shown um, what we consider to be multiplier effects, yeah. um, namely the effects that it has on parents themselves in their own ability to parent their children with some degree of confidence. Yes. And um, their disciplinary practices, they feel a lot more comfortable with their ab ability to discipline their children. Mm -hmm. And another ripple effect is that of the impact on the rovers, as we call them, who are the field workers, young persons who now feel a greater sense of dignity and self-esteem and certainly see themselves as role models within their communities. Yes, so, so this early childhood stimulation project mm -hmm. has definitely produced far-reaching social and economic results. Indeed. And we, we need to really pay attention. Yes. So the RCP is one initiative that is making a profound difference in the development of our children and we can see that regionally that will rebound to our developmental patterns as a region. We're going to continue our discussion. We'll be right back. Taking care can be so easy. It's as easy as one, two, three. Whether your family, friend or neighbor, come on. A message from the Caribbean Child Support Initiative, a program of CARICAD with support from the Bernard Bandler Foundation. Take good care of the children. A picture is worth a thousand words. Got it? Taking care of us can be so easy. Take good care of the children. 
Welcome back to our second panel discussion on the Roving Caregivers Program. You know, early childhood education is really an investment into the future, not only for the individuals at the micro level, but for investor countries as well. Studies have shown early childhood education has tremendous benefit on the socioeconomic landscape, and it is largely for this reason that the sustainability of the RCP program is now so crucial. Financial contributions have been so far been made by UNICEF, the Canada Fund, and the National Bank of, Jama of Dominica. And we do know that the Bernard Van Leer Foundation, of course, has been the main financier. Would love now to introduce you to our panel for this second part of our program. Didacus Jules, who was with us before, is the Registrar and CEO of the Caribbean Examinations Council. And we're pleased to welcome, joining us again now, is Milton Lawrence, CEO and ECIC Holdings, which is a company owned by 10 indigenous banks regionally. Thank you for joining us. Mr. Lawrence, I wonder, if, you know, when we speak of sustainability, there is the risk that it might mean different things to different people. Can you clarify what do we want to mean by sustainability with this program? Well, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. And uh, yeah, the issue of sustainability is one that um, needs some clarification. It's a concept that we have been bandying around the region for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And I know that in the past, the sustainability issue is fo the focal point for non-governmental organizations. In that context, we normally meant that if there was a program run by an NGO or the NGO itself, sustainability meant its ability to continue to operate the program mm -hmm. 